Hi all. Uh, thanks, thanks for coming over um, to attend our webinar. Uh, I'm Aloysius Chow from uh, Yamaha Music Asia. Um, I'm the sales en engineer over at Yamaha Music Asia. Today, uh, I, I'm happy to bring to you Yamaha Assembly Hall System Solutions. Uh, let's move ahead. Okay, what is today's scope of today's session on the topic Yamaha Assembly Hall System Solution? Okay, we have three pointers that we want to go through today. Uh, number one, what is the Assembly Hall? Okay, what exactly is the Assembly Hall? Think about it. Um, We'll move along and uh, and guide you through through this session. Secondly, what do we do? What do we need in the assembly hall? What are the components that you actually need in the assembly hall? Uh, lastly, but on the biggest portion of for today is on the challenges we face on how the Yamaha, the challenges we face and how this our Yamaha assembly hall system solution can offer to solve these challenges for you. Okay, there'll be three shared examples that you will find very relatable and common in our local context based in Singapore present market. Okay. So what is the assembly hall? The purpose of the assembly hall what exactly it is. Okay, the assembly hall is a venue, a space used for holding public meetings and functions. Um, so it, you can use it uh, to assemble people in, in organize, for organization, such as uh, the school, uh, maybe um, in a military camp, and a house of worship, uh, such as a temple, mosque, or a church. Yeah. Um, and also, um, I remember there were days uh, when I was younger, uh, people uh, used to gather at uh, community centers. Uh, for, um, yeah. So, um, so, so, yeah, I went through who needs it and the types of hall. Okay, for Let's uh, think about um, the military camp context. Uh. Um, I'm sure a lot of Singaporeans uh, have been through NS and uh, we all have been through the Kong Island. Um, and, it, it, uh, and in other um, army camps that you have, uh, this training shed. Uh, sometimes uh, the training shed will be a bigger scale. Uh, so um, that, that can be assembly hall. Just a small one, yeah. So in, uh, say in a commercial building, we might have um, a fire assembly hall away from the fire accident, correct? Um, to house the, the people uh, for evacuation. Okay. Um, next up, um, for house of worship, uh, maybe a temple or a church, use it for fellowship and activities um, such as uh, group prayers. Uh, sometimes they have bonding games, they have, uh, they have music, uh, music sharing, and also uh, probably a religious discussion um, that they come together. Uh, as for the public, um, we used it for nationwide activities like uh, Ration exercise, emergency drills, um, as well as for community center groups, CC groups together to practice, uh, for practice such as um, maybe a um, national day rehearsal, um, or yeah, there are many other uh, events that uh, the community center 
uh, does that they use they use their assembly hall for. Okay, in the probably most of the time uh, when we think of assembly halls uh, in my market, uh, we think about uh, majority uh, is for schools. So in the school context, uh, student assemble before uh, they start their schooling day. So uh, they, they will assemble and they, they have their school anthem and national anthem sung uh, before they move up to their classes. That's where they gather for the start of the day. Yeah. Sometimes um, probably on a, on a Fridays or when there is a guest speaker or even performances such as uh, Children's Day, Teacher's Day, uh, yeah, and, and some religious day, um, probably a Lunar New Year or Hari Raya event, they, they, the students and teachers come out with activities like that. Um, that is also used in an uh, assembly hall. So over here, you can see this is more of a, a small assembly assembly hall for music and a typical example of a school assembly hall. Later I'll talk, talk more on this uh, school assembly hall as one of my examples. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the next question. So what do we need? Let's look into the skeleton of a sound reinforcement, the basic structure of a sound reinforcement system. So over here is, is the skeleton of the sound reinforcement system. Um, we always start with input. So let us have input stage. By the input stage, we also mean what kind of medium that audio is being transported, being captured. So the most common, of course, is microphones. So over here, we have a group of people, probably a uh, tree, musician, and singer or artist, and probably a speaker. One is talking or singing. Another one probably blowing a saxophone into an uh, instrument microphone and probably another one singing. So this, this acoustic en energy is uh, converted into electrical en energy via the microphone. So you can see. So electrical energy, and then goes down into mixing of all the electrical audio signal within a, the digital, within a mixer console. So in this process, there will, there will be people, the operator will, will adjust the equalizer, will adjust the volume, uh, reverb, delay, many features in it. Whether it's a preferred feature or not, we will talk about it later. So the audio in the audio mixer is being sent to the amplifier, which is which helps to amplify the electrical audio signal, and then is being converted into acoustical energy, so electrical energy to acoustical energy, out of the output transducer, which is what we call a loudspeaker. And by the time we reach the three person who, who is the three artists who sing, they are able to hear it because the sound has been amplified. It wouldn't be possible if, if the, the audio wasn't amplified, have, hasn't been through all the stages that we have we have gone through earlier. So this helps our lives um, in 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 assembly halls, yeah. especially in assembly halls and events. Yeah. All right, um, 
so sometimes when you are uh, when the sound travel over air and space before it's being heard there are also times when this sound amplified loses most of its energy before it gets to the human ear so we will identify these issues later with with some suggested solution okay let's get started with the first challenge Okay, the first challenge we have here in venue number one, a small hall. Okay, this is, on the right you can see, this is a very typical um, a small hall, very much like a, like a small church or a small as, uh, assembly area. Um, yeah, so, uh, in this typical situation, we have we have bring up a few uh, factors that are very common. So one of it is that the customer is not audio trained. The customer has no prior knowledge to audio audio systems, and is not able to handle even an analog mixer. The only thing that comes to mind that uh, this customer knows is only to push the volume up, down, as well as turning the microphone on and off. That, that, is, that is very basic knowledge that most users who are not audio trained will face. They do not know how to use an audio mixer and they will be, very, they will be overwhelmed when they see all these um, this knobs and buttons and sliders. So the second challenge that customers usually face and is worried about is feedback. As most sound system, they are not properly tuned. Uh, they feedback. They cause feedback issues when when the microphone is too close to the speaker. The next thing about this venue is that um, sometimes um, aesthetically they do not want to mount ceiling speakers. Uh, because they they do not have a uh, false ceiling or or aesthetically they do not want to have speakers intruding the image of of probably uh, Buddha uh, uh, in a religious uh, venue so uh, yes so this is where our, our challenge is so so real um, so most of the time so most of the time in this uh, application is solely for speech and light music, okay? Let's move on to the solution. Okay, so this is our Yamaha solution for a small hall. So since customer has said that they are unable to handle an equalizer, and overwhelmed by full mixer control. Our solution is auto mixer. So um, I do not know if anyone here knows uh, about auto mixer. Does anyone knows about auto mixer? Have heard of it? Have used an auto mixer before? Uh, you can go and Google around in uh, on the web, uh, in the internet, um, you'll find that there are a few algorithms around that are it's available. Um, the most popular one has to be the one that Yamaha has. Uh, it's a proven fact that uh, the Dan Dugan auto mixing auto mixing algorithm is 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 the is the top auto mixing algorithm in the world that has been used for multiple conferences and. Uh, and, and, and venues. So um, a lot of engineers like it. Um, so um, we highly recommend this. So what does this auto mixer do uh, after talking about it and praising it so much? So the auto mixer is, uh, is basically a function where it, it does the auto mixing of multiple 
uh, microphones, uh, open microphones, uh, that means the microphones are switched on, uh, are turned on. And, and to have this all this gain st structure of this open microphones being managed and by having the algorithm every bring out the gain uh, of the microphones. So uh, so in, in that case, um, this how does it help other than just averaging out the microphone gain? So if if I have yeah if there is someone who is speaking and suddenly another speaker starts to speak in a comes into the conference to suggest some idea to interject within the the session, the speech. The algorithm helps to balance the volume of both microphones to the same level. In that case, you do not need an audio engineer to, to be there to, to constantly manage to push up the volume and down the volume just when, just when anyone opens their mouth to speak. So this has helped uh, our, our, our lines better help the sound engineer free up space to, to, to do other more creative uh, audio mixing work. But however, in this case, this, if this algorithm is set properly, um, this will help the venue, this small hall, the, the people who are using it to, to be able to run without even an audio engineer. So this algorithm help to do the work at the background. So we highly recommend this system, which is featured in our Yamaha DSP, the MTX3. Okay. So um, that being said, um, what about the controls? I'm, I'm sure there are some kind of um, audio source control Perhaps you have a, a audio player and perhaps you want to control volume. Where can we get that done? How can we control it? So Yamaha, we have what we call the DCP. We, we call in long, it's called digital control panel, DCP. Um, there are three models. The first model you see here is the DCP4S. Um, basically it has four buttons. These four buttons are totally customizable. You can set every button to, for certain function. You can assign maybe a volume up control for button three and four, and probably for button one and two, you can select the mic on and, and off, and num button number two to select the audio source or maybe a music player to turn on and off. So this makes it very simple for a basic user who do not, who do not welcome the extended audio feature. They just want to know that my audio, I can play my music, I can speak through it, I can control my volume. That's it. Very simple. Um, what about those people who prefer to manually who likes the touch of a knob to, to control a volume. Okay, we have the DCP 1V4S. 1V meaning one volume knob and 4S meaning four source. So likewise, um, it's totally customizable and you can even set, most of the time, um, the, most projects have, have we seen uh, SI, System, our system integrators uh, use program in a certain way, which is uh, probably button one, two, three, and four are four different zones. And the, whenever you press number one, the, the volume knob will be tagged to the volume of the source at zone one. And there you can control the volume for zone one. And when they press number two, the volume knob ties is activated and ties to the source at uh, button two, the zone two, and then they can control the volume. This way is, is so, so clean and so organized. 
Um, however, of course, there are times when uh, users still prefer a more straightforward way of doing it. They prefer to have four knobs for individual application and probably the four buttons to, uh, to set to turn on and off or for maybe a chime or, or to play back a certain uh, audio message. This is commonly used in uh, also in uh, when in shopping centers when they, they need to to do the closing of the day. Yes, this this allows such function. So imagine if uh, the community center has has people using the hall playing badminton, uh, booking the room badminton too late, and um, it's about time that they are going to 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 close shop for the day. Um, this all these audio files can be stored within the uh, SD card and put into the MTX3, the Yamaha DSP, and then probably they can program it to play back um, the closing message, end of day message um, by pressing uh, button one. So this is one of the solutions that we, we propose to you that you can use. Okay, let's move on to the next solution for small hall other than DSP and controls. The second problem that we had, we mentioned was that the venue was unable to mount ceiling speakers. The end user, the customer do not want to have the speakers being mount. So what do we do? So our solution is to mount surface mount speakers. So you can mount the surface mount speakers at the surface on the sides of the venue, on the left and right side of the wall. And for Yamaha, we have this VS, VXS5 and VXS8. This is the VXS series uh, commonly used um, widely within our projects. It comes uh, with with this uh, mounting bracket where you can actually mount it um, horizontally and vertically. So very, 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 very pretty speakers, very beautiful, aesthetically um, nice and, and pleasing to the customer. Okay, so the next, the next concern was feedback. Yeah, so sometimes uh, we know that if a system is not properly tuned, it's just a bad system without a DSP, uh, there is there's very high chance where feedback issues happen. So um, what can we do about it? So our solution is to have the feedback suppressor and limiter. So the feedback suppressor will suppress the, the feedback whenever it detects it, where the limiter function helps to uh, limit whenever the audio picks up, audio start to peak to a certain a level and you will cut off. So this also helps to protect your speakers as well. So usually this, this products are, are found, this solution is found in a DSP, an audio DSP, such as the MTX3, which I mentioned earlier. And these are usually housed in, in the red area. So as you can see on the right, um, the, vet, the venue that I've showed you over here. So this MTX3 uh, most often leave uh, house within this rack. Yep. And what you see over here are all these surface mouse speakers that we mentioned earlier. Uh, what about the people over, over in the center? Um, what if the sound doesn't reach to the center area? So what do we do? So we need 
we need to put in speakers to cover this area without the energy of these speakers overflowing over to these speakers over here to, to cause cancellation and also um, feedback issue if this if just relying on speakers over here in the front to cover the whole entire area. So what we can do for this example, we will use the VXL series. So let's take a look at how the VXL series look like. Yes. So the VXL series is actually um, a column speaker. Uh, I will call it a lines, line array speaker. Um, it is made up of uh, a row of um, one, one inch driver speakers um, all lined up together. And uh, later I, I will show you a video on how, how these line array speakers uh, help in this situation. Okay. Um, there are times um, where you see because our, the VXL series has a very uh, wide dispersion angle of 170 for normal setting. It has come with a 180 wide degree wide dispersion, horizontal coverage of 180 degrees setting. And uh, but however, if in this venue, if you need to uh, narrow, narrow it down. Um, we can narrow it down to 120 by doing something. By having two units be, to, to be coupled horizontally together, just like this. So over here, you can see it's being coupled. Okay, uh, let, let us watch a video uh, on the explanation on the advantages of the column line array speaker.
Okay, I'm back. Yeah, so uh, those are the advantages of the line array speakers. Um, amazing, right? Small speakers being lined together and uh, because of its small drivers, it doesn't feedback. Yeah, so this is one feature I really like about this, this product, VXL series. And it throws the energy further uh, to reach out to, to your customers needs and area. So uh, this is best being used this way. Uh, the energy is being spread evenly uh, instead of uh, relying on just two speakers or probably just two speakers, one on each side to, to cover the whole area. Uh, sometimes this, this causes a problem where um, the people sitting at the front will feel that the ear fatigue because it's so loud and uh, this happens and very easily to be identified when people are always sitting at the back, um, can see it from their face, um, they are like oh, so loud. Um, so yeah, so this is why we, uh, we recommend that uh, you use uh, right distribution of uh, speakers all around uh, a venue, a space. So uh, yeah, so let's us continue um, to the next pointer. Okay, so this is basically uh, the overall system diagram that you see over here. Uh, we have, okay, let me turn on. We have uh, the input stage microphone going into the, the rack area, this area here, the green dotted area. So we have the DSP doing the, doing the auto mixing, the feedback, suppressing, um, mixing the audio signal together, uh, managing the volume. Uh, we have a media player over here, a, a media player example, and uh, a, a four channel amplifier to, to dish out the sound to all these speakers all around. So over here you can see the VXL 1-24 is, is mounted horizontally, uh, vertically in this example. And uh, you can mount it horizontally if you want to. And also for VXS5 at the side of this uh, venue. And for the control, they have the digital control panel, the DCP 4B4S to control the volume and also probably the volume and also um, to, for turning on the audio source. Okay, what if, what if there is a need for, for customers who, um, who find it difficult um, every time they need to, they, they are talk, while they are talking, they want to adjust the volume. Is there a way that they do not need to go to the rack, to the wall, just to turn down the volume? Is there a way? Uh, yes, for Yamaha system, we have um, wireless control for it. Uh, basically, all you need to do is to, to attach the MTX3, the, the Yamaha DSP port with a wireless uh, router and uh, via and with uh, probably a, your iPad, uh, you can download this uh, free app um, and also uh, for your Windows, you can download this, uh, this app called Provision Air. So you some for Windows PC, some might use a, probably a Microsoft Surface a touch a touch screen um, PC. Uh, you can you can bring it around and adjust or with an iPad. As you can see, the 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 one on the iPad has this very very unique um, GUI. We call it a, a graphical user interface. Uh, this, for even a Windows and an iPad version, they are all fully customizable. Uh, yeah, so uh, maybe perhaps uh, let's watch another video. This will be the last video that you'll see. Um, it will tell you more about 
um, this provision air that will that helps to your lines better with uh, wireless control um, and help me by making a guess uh, spot the three types of usage that has been used in the video uh, by uh, using the uh, provision air to control uh, let's watch the video Okay, uh, how do you enjoy the video? Have anyone able to guess and spot the, the three different functions that um, this provision air uh, has enabled this, uh, and this Yamaha DSP to work? Any guesses? Uh, let, me, let me see if anyone have have answered anything. Okay, so basically the three functions that um, was shown during this video was uh, that it helps to activate a motorized projector screen. So the projector screen was activated by coming down and then uh, turning on of, of a projector and also uh, audio vol volume control for the speakers. So very simple controls via this uh, uh, GUI. You can even upload uh, photos of uh, the venue, of the location of, or the company or school logo on this uh, customizable GUI. Totally customizable, yep. Okay, let's, let's move on to the next challenge, which is uh, venue two. Okay, over here we can, over here we, we can see a new setup, uh, something bigger, very, very typical uh, of, uh, of the assembly halls that you see in, around in Singapore. So this is a medium size uh, hall. The, the first challenge is because it's bigger, it's a medium size hall. Huh? Uh, second ch challenge is uh, the end user does not like um, audio, limited audio control functions. Unlike the, the first uh, venue as example, the user who prefers to have simple controls, this time the user is a uh, is audio trained and they, they like to have matter around the audio, they like to have full control, like driving a manual car. Yeah. So um so and with the the setup, the smaller speakers um from this uh from the previous example, this one that smaller sound system cannot cannot support this venue. So the noise uh, from the crowd, no matter how, how hard the speaker, the announcement guy is trying to say, hey, please keep quiet. Uh, we are going to start event, our event soon. Nobody can hear it. Yeah. So that is one of our challenges here.
So basically, this, this application is based on speech and also performance. Okay. So um, let's move on. Okay. Okay, let's move to the first point. Um, the end user does not like limited audio control. What is the solution to it? Of course, to provide a full audio control option. And in this case, we shall settle with a, a simple analog mixer for now. Uh, of course, what, what you can see here is a Yamaha MG16XU commonly used and seen uh, with a lot of uh, rental companies um, in a lot of event space uh, being a 16 channel usually the default size of a mobile rack and uh, just nice for for most applications live applications of course uh, other than that uh, uh, we also have other products like the mg xu and mgp uh, series okay um talking about the mixer portion uh, what kind of full audio control does people who are trained usually like um, okay uh, number one we would think of uh, is usually uh, it's plain to see is uh, is the is the buttons on this mixer if you reference to this mixer over here uh, this green section uh, these are usually uh, the EQ section. Um, there is a bass, mid, uh, mid, low, mid, high, or mid with a selectable uh, mid frequency and, uh, and, and the treble. So um, sometimes you need that to, to manage the sound characteristic because uh, different people, voice have different, different tone. Uh, some have lower tone, you need to accentuate. Um, you need to cut away the low and accentuate the mids or some some probably ladies have a higher uh, speech frequency they do probably have to cut down on the high end to to not to not have it too too in the face so to make it very comfortable for everybody to balance it out so these controls come in very very useful another feature is also a compressor to compress the sound uh, if for example, if uh, people are talking too softly, the compressor helps to bring, bring up the, the volume of, of it to a certain level. Or uh, if it's too loud, this thing protects and brings it down to this uh, average level uh, to be comfortable to hear. So um, very useful. On Yamaha MG, we have this one knob compressor, which makes it even simpler. Uh, most of the time, compressor, in the market has a lot of at least about four to six knobs to control but Yamaha made it easy with this one knob control over here this yellow knob here um, yeah then uh, moving on we have um, also probably uh, aux, uh, aux to send out the audio from the, these channels into the aux uh, master to these monitors the monitor speakers are on stage uh, or even the control room uh, for, for the performance. And uh, also uh, there is things like uh, other features like uh, group grouping. Probably you can send this channel and this channel to group one for vocals and uh, the other, one, other channel from maybe group together as drums to another group. So, and the master group one, group Group two can be controlled individually as a certain as a as a whole vol volume together instead of individual volume um, per channel that you need to push up. So much faster um, way of doing things. Um, there are also other features like uh, modulation effects. Um, say um, over here you can see uh, there's this uh, section where you see the twenty four. This is this showing. Um, the 24th effect that is built in on this mixer that's, that is available. It can be a reverb 
an echo or a plate effect. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, so, the MG series without the effects, the MGXU with this modul modulation effects, uh, and then uh, the MGP series being the premium range has the extended feature of probably uh, two modulation effects at one go, uh, priority darker when someone, the main person is speaking, uh, if you are playing a music uh, and the main speaker person is speaking, uh, the music goes down, the volume goes down. This And there are such things as leverer, if uh, you are playing different um, audio tracks, um, it helps to manage the volume of different audio tracks volume. So it doesn't suddenly peak when the second track that is louder starts playing. And uh, of course, uh, being premium, uh, it has even extended graphical EQ uh, for more precise EQ via uh, probably an iPhone, uh, an iPod, iTouch, uh, and also maybe uh, for those who require uh, to record um, all their, their shows into a thumb drive, um, it's available on the MGP series. Yep. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. The, the next problem we, we have is the noise from the crowd that drowns out uh, from this, uh, with this smaller system, like the one in uh, the previous venue, uh, venue number one, which is a small hall. Okay, the solution to it, um, basically there are two solutions, uh, two loudspeaker solutions. Uh, one requires an amplifier, which is uh, passive, using a passive loudspeakers. Over here we have uh, uh, one of our uh, loudspeaker, the CBR series, and being powered by the PX series amplifier. And also for those people who prefer to to have um, this, this amplifier building, uh, they do not want to have amplifier racks at their rack area. Yes, you can do it uh, with uh, active loudspeaker, but uh, we usually, this is not recommended for fixed installation, but there is no right or wrong to it. Uh, it's uh, just a, a preference. Um, the reason why um, it's not so common uh, for loudspeakers to be mounted uh, because uh, Every speaker, loudspeaker needs a power plug, and and also uh, if in in a case where uh, this speaker uh, spoils over, spoils uh, it's going to be difficult um, if to to have to have to climb up to to bring it down if it's just the amplifier that is is faulty. So if you have a passive loudspeaker setup, uh, if it's just most of the time, if it's just an amplifier issue, you can just replace the amplifier from the rack, get a new one, and replace it. Uh, so for our Yamaha PX, uh, PX series amplifier, the one that you see here, uh, it even has a thumb drive for you to store the settings for, uh, for your preset that you have set on this amplifier. So even if, if you buy a new one, replace it, you just have to load up with a thumb drive. And yeah, that's it today. A very fast, very efficient way of doing things. Yeah. So uh, of course, um, for, for active uh, loudspeakers, we have uh, our range of, in the DBR series and DXR series. The DXR series are the Nixo inspired uh, range. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next Looks like um, so. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, venue tree, which is a large hole. Okay, the first challenge we have that you can see is it has a very wide uh, area space, very wide area space, right? So uh, sometimes. Uh, because of that, there is uneven sound coverage. Um, if, if the solution example of uh, 
venue two is applied to this venue, uh, it will not work because it's too wide. Uh, you probably um, you can take a look at this diagram over here. This this picture an example of a school hall. Um, the speakers are over here. Uh, they are mounted in a different angle for a certain reason. Uh, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Okay, next one is uh, audience need to, to be able to hear themselves on stage and also to hear whatever uh, uh, audio source that is being played on stage. So because the speakers are, are so far away from the, from the presenter, um, they are unable to get the sound and have a clear, uh, clear picture of what, what is being played from the top speakers that are on above and in front of them. So, and a very common uh, thing is that uh, sometimes there are requirements for especially for bigger halls like this, uh, where where they they are being used for for third part by third party and uh, third party end users. So in this case of a school, perhaps a school hall is rented for other events by a public member uh, on a yeah on a weekend or something on a Saturday for other events activity events um, in a probably in the case of a community center, um, there are many other uh, different activity uh, groups that share this same hall. So in this uh, case number three, uh, we have this application is meant for speech and all types of performances. Okay, let's get to the solution. white the first point being a white area space the solution is by using uh, larger loudspeakers of course and having more uh, loud, uh, loudspeakers so you see these speakers are angered to a certain area if you can recall the earlier picture um, the hall they have these speakers being directed this being directed to the sides, and this direct this speaker angled to to be directed to the center area, so this gives it a very even uh, sound coverage. Next up, what about the people at the back? Yeah, so because sound loses energy uh, over distances, we have to put in this delay speakers. Okay, why do we call it delay speakers? Because uh, by the time the sound, the, the sound of the first speaker is being projected and traveled to this maximum effective distance, uh, we need to have these delay speakers to be, to be, to be playing the delayed sound uh, to match this, the sound of the, or rather the time of the sound reaching uh, from, the, from the first speaker. So uh, maybe it sounds confusing to you. Maybe let me just phrase it a bit differently. Um, what if we do not put this delay speakers? What happens? The people sitting at the area at the back where the delay speakers are being projected, the coverage area of the delay speakers, will hear the message twice. Why twice? So once is by the first by the delay speakers and then later the sound traveling from the the front speaker that reached them so they are hearing two sounds so this is this is necessary for uh, for this delay speakers to be to be pro programmed uh, this is why we need a DSP to cater uh, for for such such needs, uh, please uh, for for all the SIs, uh, please keep yourself uh, updated uh, and also provide this service to 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 your customers. Uh, we we often see uh, our group 
our group of Yamaha SIs that work under with us, uh, they are good, they are very knowledgeable and they are trained system integrators that we, we, we choose to work with um, to, to give proper tuning to, um, to, this, to the end customers. So uh, this gives uh, all the customers uh, uh, a sense of security. Yeah. So proper tuning is very important. So back to the topic again, uh, the next thing we need are also subwoofers. So sometimes uh, there are heavy performance uh, where it requires a band, uh, um, maybe low sound, they need the punch, the low end, that kind of effect to it. Um, we, we will require a subwoofer in this venue. So the recommended series that we will use for for a large hall is for passive speakers we will use the CZR series and active speakers we use the DZR and the DZR D series. Um, later I'll elaborate more on the D series and also uh, for subwoofers uh, we have the passive CXS range, DXS is the active version and the D the XSD subwoofers. Okay, let's move on to the next point, next challenge, and the solution for it. The audience needs to hear on stage. Okay, so what solution do we have? We put in monitor speakers. So the most ideal will be to have wedge speakers facing the performance. Um, I would like to share a bit more on this. Um, we realized quite a lot of, um, co quite a lot of uh, comment that people have mentioned that, oh, we bought, very, we bought a very large speaker, wedge speaker for our monitors. How come it still keep giving us problems? Um, because sometimes it's just too big. Um, some monitors are usually meant to be smaller in size um, and evenly spread. So as you push up the, as you use a loud, louder speaker and push up the volume, um, they, is, they will have the tendency to feedback. So we encourage to use smaller energy speakers, uh, like smaller speakers distrib uh, evenly distributed through the stage so that uh, even coverage and uh, less energy from the microphone, um, big, from the speaker being um, feedback loop into the microphone. So in that case, you have, you lesser the chances of having feedbacks. Okay, for this range, we will, we, we recommend the CBR and the DBR and DXR series. Okay. Let's move on. To, I believe this is the last point for this large hall solution. Let's talk about it. Okay, it requires mobile setup. Uh, over here on the right, you can see uh, this uh, audio mixer. Uh, over here, we can see actually this is actually a Yamaha TF uh, TF1 mixer uh, being mounted on the, the rack. So the solution to having a mobile setup uh, so that this, this rack can be moved to probably in the station at where the audience are hearing while the audio engineer is mixing and watching the performance uh, going live. So it's easier to monitor. Okay, how do we do it? By audio networking. Uh, so we have a system called Dante. Uh, Dante is uh, commonly used because uh, many other third parties, uh, brands, other brands have also adopted Dante. Uh, it's, so it's easier to, to, to integrate different brands together if, if there is a need to. Yeah. Uh, so we, we recommend a digital mixer because a digital mixer have is able to, to have uh, to send done audio um, 
via Dante. So make sure your the, your mixer have a Dante uh, function feature in it for, for it to work. Secondly, uh, in order for all the audio network to come in, you need a switch to consolidate all the audio traffic. So over here you can see this is the one of our latest switch, uh, the SW210 uh, uh, MMF, a multi-mode fiber. We have a single mode fiber for this as well. So this is being racked in, into the mobile rack. And of course, we have our, our version of our DSP with Dante. Uh, we have, uh, in fact, um, two, two different uh, two models. Uh, one is MKX5. And the one you are seeing here is the MRX seventy. Uh, what's what, what is the difference? Uh, the MRX seventy have a very open architecture way of programming, uh, whereas the MTX five D is a fixed uh, fixed structure of uh, programming. So it's easier for people who are not so um, versed um, with with drawing a diagram to to piece up the connection. Okay, we can mount this. In the rank as well. And last of all, Dante speakers. I previously mentioned uh, models like DZR with a D at the back. Uh, so these are the range that uh, I believe Yamaha is one of the, the first few brands to, to come up with a Dante speaker. So you can actually send your audio via uh, this your cat six cable um, via Dante through it to, to the speaker. And reducing noise because uh, it's through the medium of uh, uh, this CAT, CAT6 cable instead of RJ45, in, instead of uh, digitally, instead of uh, just, uh, audio cable where over distance, you know, energy get lost and, and the sound of the audio quality get um, deteriorates because of the, 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 the quality of the cable and also um, noise induced over over the distance of the uh, audio cable run. So uh, another feature I would like, because this is a Yamaha session, uh, I would also say that uh, this DZR series, DZR D series, uh, is able is able to be detected and is integrated into this Yamaha TF series. So uh, so it's so much easier for you to control and turn on uh, your your your. Dante speakers uh, via the TF series uh, digital mixer. This is also one of the most common uh, Dante setup we have in some of the churches that we have installed uh, for the assembly halls as well. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you. And um, we have we have come to the Q and A session. Uh, please leave your inquiries uh, on the queue. An A segment. Uh, do let us know uh, what what question you have. Any questions? Oh, is someone typing a question? Do let us know. Okay. Uh, so so how do how do y'all contact us? Um. Okay. So um. Uh, yeah. Um can like and like our and follow our our facebook page and drop us a pm a, a pm message to us if you have any questions yeah uh, you can also uh, let us know how you like the this webinar session through our facebook page and uh, 
yeah, please help us, help us to like our follow and follow our Yamaha CA page, Facebook page, as well as our Instagram page. We have an Instagram page. Uh, in the meantime, uh, keep your eyes peeled on our, our event and webinars on our event section for what is upcoming. Okay, I would also like to, I would also like to have to share some uh, last uh, last pointers. Um, um, is that uh, sometimes uh, you, as new SIs, uh, there are, there are more companies who are interested in uh, this uh, Yamaha system. Uh, how how do y'all go about? Is there is there anywhere you can learn about uh, audio? Uh, yes, uh, in our Yamaha page, we, we do have um, a starter kit uh, where we call it Audioversity also. Um, there are guides there uh, for you to read. Um, we will we'll probably post it sometime. Um, you can find it on our Yamaha page also. Uh, there are YouTube videos for you to, to go through it and learn. Um, but if you have any questions, uh, please please let us know. Um, uh, email us. Uh, we are we'll be happy to to guide you along, to to share with you our ideas, our Yamaha solution, uh, what is possible, and perhaps some features have not been shared because um, today's uh, overview of um, uh, what is necessary for assembly. How um, if uh, there are more in-depth and more interesting design. Yes, um, let us know. And we, we, we thank you for, for your interest in our webinar and this wonderful time you have spent together with us. Um, have a good, good weekend, great weekend, and uh, we, we shall see you soon. Thank you so much again. Bye-bye.